What's happening, gang? It's your boy Retro back again with another reaction video. Yeah, yeah. Today we got another huge update. I think MAGA just found Donald Trump's VPN running mate, who he's going to be taking into the White House later on this year. I know this has been highly speculated upon. You know, everyone's been trying to guess who Donald Trump is going to be taking into that White House later on this year to serve beside him, guys. And I got to say, Mark Robinson is making his case right here in this newest clip. I'm not going to do too much talking. This clip is already long enough, guys. But I will say, you guys, definitely want to stick around till the end. You guys, get my thoughts on the back end. Also, you guys can see Mark Robinson say some very interesting things towards the end of this clip. So, guys, definitely make sure you guys check it all the way out to the end. Um, but let's get straight to the clip. Before we do that, though, make sure you guys hit that like button for me and also hit that subscribe button as we're on the road to the truth. Hop aboard for the journey. Let's get into it, y'all. Fantastic, fantastic. How's everybody doing? Good. Very first thing we're going to do, as always, we're going to give thanks to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Are there reporters in this room somewhere? I can't see through the light. It's the mainstream media here. <laughs> if you're here, I want you to hear this. Hear me. I don't care what you say about me. I don't care what you do in your newsroom. I don't care about your plans and your schemes to bring this nation down with your democratic friends. Why? Because Jesus Christ is still on the throne. Amen. You may have your news cameras and your satellites and your 24 hour news, but Jesus Christ holds the world in his hands. And he holds me in it as well. And what he has for me, you cannot keep from coming true. It may not be the governor's mansion. It may not be any political seat. But you will not stop Jesus Christ's will in my life. So I do not fear you. Write your stories. Tell your lies. Tell your half-truths. But Christ is still on the throne. And because he lives in my heart and I live for him, I know whatever I need to do on this earth for him, it will get done. Mm -hmm. So we give him thanks first and foremost. Guys, all these other guys that come out here and talk to you about the issues, we know the issues. The wide open border, crime on the street, fentanyl killing our children, pornography in our schools. We know about the issues, the failing economy. The precarious place the United States find this, finds itself in on the world stage with its enemies. The horrible, absolutely dreadful administration that is currently leading our nation right now. It is mind-numbing to think that the most energetic, the greatest nation on earth, people seek to come to for that vaunted thing that we have, the freedom and energy and intelligence that we have in this country and all 350 million people are being led by somebody who just barely knows that they're here on earth. <laughs> we know what the issues are, but I, you know, I didn't really come here to go into details about the issues. What I really came here to do, I came here to get something started. See, because we got a problem in this country. We got a bunch of clapple trap people that sit behind news media desks and want to talk about fake trials for President Trump. Turn the television on, they're talking about first one actor and then another actor. Talking about all manners of foolishness. Talking about MAGA Republicans being the most dangerous people on earth. I don't know, I don't see any MAGA Republicans on 9-11 blowing up buildings and airplanes. think any MAGA Republicans were over in Israel murdering people. And I don't think a MAGA Republican gave them the money to be able to do it. You see, we got folks in this country that don't want to talk about the substantive issues that all of us face. The things that we just talked about, that wide open border, the precarious place we find ourselves with safety and security in the world, on the world stage. They don't want to talk about your pocketbook. They don't want to talk about the fact that your children are in schools where we spend millions upon millions upon millions of dollars for those schools and the children can't read on the grade level. 
They don't want to talk about that. They don't want to talk about the fact that every single solitary policy that they proposed and then passed yields horrible results. They don't want to talk about it. Why? Because it proves an essential truth. It proves an essential truth. What is that truth? The simple truth of the matter is this. They call us the right. We sit on the right. And we not only get called the right and call ourselves the right and sit on the right, we are right. <laughs> we are right about every single solitary issue. When we say, shut that border down and deport those who are dangerous to our country, we are right. When we say, children should not be sexualized, we are right. And this nation knows it. When we say that it's your money, you earned it, you worked for it, the government should not be picking your pocket. We are right. <laughs> See, we are right. Too many of us are ashamed to be right, though. Some of us, we go to work and folks start talking about politics and start standing up saying, I think Joe Biden's doing a wonderful job. And he's a nice man because that President Trump is just mean. I just don't like the things that he says. He's just mean and arrogant and he's a bully. If I hear that one more time, I am going to go crazy. This man is fighting. Let's list the people he's fighting. He's fighting almost the entire news media. He's fighting all the Democrats. He's fighting all the communists. He's fighting all the socialists. He's fighting all of our enemies across the ocean. And sadly, he's fighting half the Republicans. How is this man a bully? How is he a bully? You see, we hear that at work sometimes. Some of us are a little shy about stepping up, standing up, saying anything. People look at us and say, why are you a Republican? We say, well, you know, my mom voted Republican, and I like Ronald Reagan. <laughs> I think he did a great job, and I like Reagan. And so I, that's why I'm a Republican. We shy away from the truth. We don't want to look at that person and say, you know, well, wasn't it the Republican Party that was formed to stand up for the Republic? Mm. Not the democracy like you see played on the news every day. You see, them folks want a democracy. They want the mob to rule. They don't want this republic. And they don't re want Republicans standing up for the republic. You're going to tell them that, uh, yeah, wasn't it? Uh, well, they say, well, the Republican Party is the party of old white men. <laughs> and while we're on that subject, wasn't it the Republican Party that uh, fought a war to free the slaves? Mm. Mm -mm -mm. How many Jim Crow laws were passed by Republicans? Wasn't it the Republicans who ended Jim Crow? Then you can take it even further and say, oh, so you're a Democrat. Why are you a Democrat? You know, the Democrats were the ones that were in favor of slavery. They were the ones in favor of the Confederacy. They were the ones that created Jim Crow. They are the ones that made the laws and they are the mm. ones that fought like hell to keep them until they found out a different way to enslave people. Mm, mm, instead mm, of mm. giving them welfare, instead of giving them slave shacks and slave shacks and shackles, they decided they were going to give them welfare checks and the ghetto. You see, there are truths that nobody wants to talk about. Not the news media, not the college, excuse me, the college professors. I'm getting excited up here, guys. Not the college professors. Nobody want the front row. Y'all better watch out, bro. Woo!
spitting fire up here today. Y'all better watch out. Nobody wants to talk about it, but I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about it. And you should too. You should run and go tell the good news of why you're a Republican. You can take it all the way back to 1860 and bring it all the way up right now to 2020. You look at the states that are run by Republicans. Look at what Sarah Huckabee Sanders is doing in Arkansas. Look at what Glenn Youngkin is doing in Virginia. Look at what Ron DeSantis is doing in Florida and Greg Abbott is doing in Texas. Look at what the Republican legislature in North Carolina is doing and has done since 2010. And while we're on that subject, think about what North Carolina will do when Mark Robinson is the Republican governor. Mm. You see, there's a truth that's got to be told. Unfortunately, no one will tell it if you don't. No one will be bold enough to tell it if you're not. I speak about this all the time, and when I do, I try to do it without shedding tears, but it's hard for me to do it. I tell my wife I have two great dreams. One great dream exists on this side of the earth. The other dream exists on the other side. The dream on the other side is very, it's very dear to me. And people think that I hate people. I don't hate people. I hate actions. Mm. I hate actions that take advantage of people, and destroy people's lives and destroy and wreck nations. I hate the actions. I don't hate the people. One of my greatest dreams as a Christian is this. And I take it to heart, and when I say it, I mean it. You know, they tell me that when I die, if I do what God says on earth, that he has reserved a mansion for me with many rooms. I think about that room that he may reserve for me. And I think about myself in it. And if that place is like anything like down here on earth, maybe people would come and visit me. You know who I want to come and visit me? Of course, I love to see the heroes of the faith come. My mother, my family, those that I love. But you know who else I want to see? I want to look out my window down in my driveway and see Nancy Pelosi come walking up. <laughs> I'm serious. I want to see Joe Biden come walking up. I do. I do. I want to look down there and see my opponent, Josh Stein, come walking up. I want to look down there and see everybody who opposed me on earth, who called me an enemy on earth. I want to, I want to see them come walking up that, that driveway. You know why? Because it means they made it. Because they made it. Now, I don't want my opponent to make it to the governor's mansion. <laughs> but I sure wouldn't mind if he made it to heaven. Because I don't hate anybody. And I want to see every single solitary person on this earth. I want to see their soul saved. Mm, 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 mm. Every single solitary person. And each and every one of us that calls ourselves a Christian should pray vehemently for their souls. That we would see them in heaven and forget about all this when we get up there. My second dream is this, and it's down here on earth. One day years from now, now you look at them old photographs and you can tell what year they were taken. I want an old photograph to be sitting up on somebody's shelf in a home somewhere. I don't know where it may be. Could be here, some, some other place. And I want somebody to pull that photograph down and look at it and say, who is this man? And I want one of my grandchildren 
or great grandchildren or great grandchildren right here in the United States of America to take that picture and hold it up over their head and say, this is my grandfather. Mm. And I live in freedom today because he was man enough to stand up and give me the same kind of freedom that he grew up in. To me, that would be the single greatest honor on this earth. Mm -hmm. I sincerely hope that each and every one of you would want to have that honor as well. Now, before I leave you, I want to leave you with this. Who are we as Republicans? Who are we as conservatives? Who are we as patriots? Who are we as MAGA Republicans? I boil it all down to this. Earlier this month, we celebrate what I call America's St. Crispin's Day. D-Day, June the 6th, 1944. The spirit of MAGA, the spirit of us, the spirit of the American patriot is embodied in those boys in those boats. It lives inside of the hearts of each and every person in this room. It lives inside of the people who go back home and get politically active and are bound and determined to change the circumstances of their cities and their state and their nation. It exists in those moms who had the unmitigated gall, according to some, to go down to the school board and demand that their children not be sexualized. It lives in the heart of every patriot who decides to put their name on the dotted line and serve in office. It exists inside of Americans who love this nation. The heart of the boys in those boats on that day is literally the epitome of America. When times get tough for us, when you get scared, when you get nervous, when you think you can't win, think about them boys in the boats. Think about them bullets hitting that door. Think about the fact when that door opened, they didn't run to the back, they ran out that door. Bullets be damned, death be damned. I'm here to save my country. You think about them, you remember them, and you remember their sacrifice was not in vain because it lives in you and it lives in me and it lives in all of us. Let's let that energize us to save this nation one more time. God bless you all and God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Yo, there we have it, guys. Representative Mark Robinson coming out absolutely spitting hot fire flames, guys. Spitting the truth, um, talking his way right into a spot next to Donald Trump in that White House later on this year. If you ask me, guys, I mean, he is laying out all the MAGA, you know, the principles behind what making America great again would look like. Mark Robinson very passionately laying out there that he is an America first patriot that only cares about, you know, faith and freedom of our country, guys. Characteristics we just seen on display coming from Mark Robinson is just flat out what Donald Trump needs. This would be, you know, the peanut butter to his jelly um, in his presidential cabinet. It just seems like Mark Robinson just cares so much um, about the country, about our freedom. Where he's hitting on all the points with all the issues in America, you know, that be our southern borders, you know, our, our economy right now. Um, and he's even going as far as to say, you know, he's not worried about these charade cases, or all these enemies that are coming after Donald Trump. You know, all those folks that are trying to say Trump is a bully. They got to wake up and actually see what's going on. I mean, it's Trump against the world out here. He's got very few that's actually on his side. It's all the folks that have woke up and been able to see past, you know, the charade cases, all these you know, uh, political vendettas and biases that these judges and justice have against him. Got Mark Robinson saying that none of this is going to phase him and it shouldn't phase Donald Trump. Trump either and there's one reason because of that it's one reason why Donald Trump hasn't been touched he's come out of this whole thing unscathed and that's because of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ I mean come on guys this is someone who knows what our nation stands for who remembers that we are a republic after all a lot of folks don't even remember that uh, Mark Robinson knows all his points and he's a proud Republican I mean this guy right here has blown me out of the water with you know how much he cares about us our country and you know uh, walking us towards you know a, a better country Country, you know for our future for our future generations our grandchildren our great great grandchildren I mean it really does something to you I mean it touched you down to the soul to hear a man you know pouring his heart soul out um, like you know two of his biggest wishes in life that be to see you know his enemies all of his enemies to make it to heaven you know that be Joe Biden Hillary Clinton got listed first guys it 
that totally took me away. But then when I thought about it, I realized this guy is truly wholesome. Even he wants to see, you know, that his en enemies make it past um, and, and conquer all their challenges in life, you know, to make it to that, you know, that that fulfillment in the afterlife. Um, and then his other biggest wish in life is to be a picture on the wall, guys. He has a picture on the wall for his great grandchildren to pull him off the wall and proudly explain that this is, you know, my great grandfather. This is my grandfather who, you know, fought for the freedom that we have today. Um, you know, this country that we live in is because of, you know, partly because of my grandfather that we see today in this photo, guys. I mean, that guy right there, that's what you need, um, you know, stepping into the White House with you later on this year, especially amidst all the enemies and snakes in uh, DC. I feel like Donald Trump needs a guy like Mark Robinson, man. I don't know. He's making his campaign right here, guys. If you made it this far, guys, definitely hop in the comment section and let me know your thoughts. You guys think Representative Mark Robinson here is making a great case for him being a VP candidate or VP choice for Donald Trump later on this year to take him to the White House, guys. Definitely hop in the comment section. Let me know what you're thinking. Also, make sure you guys share this out to as many Facebook friends as possible. You guys share the truth. Also, make sure you guys hit that like button. Doesn't cost one thing. You guys hit that like button for your boy and also hit that subscribe button as we're on the road to the truth hop aboard for the journey i'll catch you guys on the next week Cow.